You're as cold as ice. You're willing to sacrifice our love. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. Today we are joined by the Matthew Okimoto. How you doing, Matthew? Hey, what's up? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good, and before we get started, I do want to thank our, our Cards of Evilly sponsor for this, um, and we will, of course, be talking about the reunion event, which is really exciting, uh, but before we do that, I do want to just touch base on a little a little thing that happened today. Um, so, what? where were you? You know how you always remember where you were during during uh, major life events, Oki? Mm-hmm. Where were you when Thaumaturge and Jesper were banned? <laughs> At my computer desk, <laughs> reading it. <laughs> <laughs> it. What was your initial reaction? Well, my, my Facebook blew up. Like, as soon as that post was made, like, I got, like, four or five private messages, like, three or four notifications. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I usually have my all my chats muted while I'm working, and I just happened to be at, like, a lunch break, and I happened to clicked Facebook and then it, it was a post from North America that said like, uh, you know, concerning bands or whatever. And I, and I legitimately did not believe it at first. I was very confused. Or, or, or I think my first reaction might've even been that I thought that it was going to be something along the lines of like, this is why we're not banning something that we are paying attention. Uh huh. And then like, I, I opened it up and I was, it was like, I'm t- it was like Christmas for me, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm glad that they banned it personally. I I think it's if if something like that's unhealthy for the game, then they should handle it. I know lots of people locally that have either quit or taken a break from the game because of a deck that was created from those cards. No, yeah, that's that's really fair. I uh, I agree, and I've had we've had similar experiences here. I don't know if we've had anyone quit, but we've had like attendance die out when we had a lot of turbo. Um, I myself wanted to play turbo to practice for nationals and like people were just miserable about it. I had my wife play and then she just top top four at every single event, like literally all of them. Um, so <laughs> it, it just ran, you know, even playing in like the LQ, like, you know, I got, I, I loved, I love my boy Phoenix. Um, who's one of our guys out here who plays locally. Apparently we all have these made up names, by the way, I was just thinking like Phoenix. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> But to give you some perspective, you know, he's he, he doesn't play very often. Um, he's not, like, super in touch with the rules or whatever. We're playing in a high-level LQ event, and he just ran me over. And I was just like, wow, that was a cool deck. I'm glad I had a lot of interaction. <laughs> uh, I actually have a similar story. We, we have a, a dude, uh, his name's Kelly. He plays locally. He's, like, in the Army, so some, he only can play like, every so often. Mm-hmm. So he happened to be in town for, like, one of the local qualifiers. Hasn't played for, like, two sets. Looked online that Turbo Discard was like one of the best decks to play. Copies some list from a recent event and top four is the event. Almost, almost wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, it's, and it's that's so an cool. event with like that's an event with like a lot of the good California players like Kyle, me, and you know Nate, everyone. And this is a guy who hasn't played for two sets, picks up Turbo Discard, and almost wins a local qualifier. Yeah, it's it's pretty absurd. Now the reactions are. Of course, mixed because everyone is on this, you know, this slippery slope fallacy, and 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 I really hate when people use fallacies and arguments. And the slippery slope fallacy, for those that don't know, is basically uh, X will happen uh, to the power of whatever because this happened before. You know, so like because they made these bans all the way to Opus Seven, they'll now ban things in Opus Eight, and then they'll ban things in Opus Nine. And there's actually no precedent to think that way. Um, but it is a you know, a uh, it's a an over an overreaction is the easiest way to say it, right? Yeah, like like the way I, I handle it is I just take it as it is. Like I probably have like very little influence on whether they decide to ban cards or not. Like I, I think the player base may think they do because like they voice their opinion or whatever. But like I'm sure they test it internally and like also check data from all over the world to see if it's like worth it they won't just be like oh well this part of the community all complains about it so let's go ban it i'm sure that's not what they do <laughs> I, I i would guess that that's exactly zero percent of 
what actually <laughs> happened. I think that you're right that they tested it and they internally and they said, wow, this is actually really not fun. This is not, we're not having a good time. Um, these matches aren't interactive and this is not how we imagine playing Final Fantasy. Yep. Now, and, and I'm sure they have like, they have people who report, like I'm sure like maybe RV and like Tim and like all the people who like oversee their region, they probably ask them for feedback too and see like what their community is saying and I'm sure there's a lot put into it other than people complaining on like a Facebook forum. <laughs> right. <laughs> to make well, that no, decision. I mean, realistically, we, we could just assume that it was Josh Go, right? Who, who single-handedly <laughs> took took down the, the Gesper Menace. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that. Uh, so, Josh, <laughs> thank you for, for all that you do. Um, <laughs> I don't he was so excited. Oh, my God. He, like, I blew know. up Facebook. I know. I think I I was I was working, so I didn't get to watch the video. But I think he posted like a video of him like shrining, like worshiping something, basically. Like I don't I don't remember what that video was, but I remember when I saw it. I was like, "What in the world? I can't wait to watch this." Yeah, he posted in like five different groups. I got a message from. I'm sure he messaged everybody else privately. Yeah. He was probably he was probably one of the most excited people. <laughs> oh, I think he was the most excited person. I don't I don't think it's very close, honestly. Um. And I, you know, for good reason, like good riddance, right? Like, geez, like get out of here. <laughs> I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm very excited that this happened. I don't blame him for being excited. Um, now, I do, I do think that it's a legitimate concern that you know they they shouldn't go over the over the top with bans. Um, and I think one of the things that people are concerned about is the thaumaturge ban. Uh, what were your thoughts on the thaumaturge ban? Um, I, I think I can see the reasoning behind it, but, like, I didn't think Thaumaturge was as bad as Gasper, personally. Sure, yeah. But, like, I can see they, that, I believe, like, if I was them, the reason they probably banned Thaumaturge is because it's a turn one discard that you can do with, like, in, without any drawback. Like, people were like, oh, but they have the new Red Mage, right? But the new Red Mage requires you to have to use two different, uh, CP colors. Right. So it's not, a, you can't really turn one that, right? So it's not as easy as being, like, multiple Thaumaturges is turn one. Which is right. pretty unfun. Yeah, yeah. So I can like see why they did it, but eh. yeah, it's very it's it's very frustrating. And the other thing is like people people were talking about. Uh, I know that there was some hate on the idea of Sephiroth, the legend, being in Turbo Ice. Uh, but really, if if you really think about it, it was already playing the five drop. And the idea that you could mulligan into a hand that either guaranteed you had Umaro into Gesper or Sephiroth or in the special, obviously, or one of the three discards, you know, in a combination of each other, the odds started to increase to me. And when I was testing it, what I found was, is if you did Sephiroth special, there was no recovery. So people tend to say, well, like, then you just have one forward and they could do this or whatever. But it's like, well, if they play a forward, when he attacks and free, he attacks, he doles and freezes that guy. So now he's getting in two points of damage. Like, it's just, it's actually ridiculous. Um... So yeah, just, and then and in that scenario, if Gasper wasn't banned, you would have to you'd be playing off of one to two cards to answer that, right? Forever, right. <laughs> right? Yeah, and so to me, that that seems like a, a fine um, a fine ban. I think what really gets me right is the people who are so upset about the ban. I I really I want to ask this question to them. Honestly, how much are you losing? Like, how much does this personally affect you? The co they, I think they're both commons, right? So financially, you're not losing anything. Um, you're not losing anything financially. And then if you played Gesper, like you, I don't, I don't want to be negative. I just think that you know, cause my wife plays Gesper. I just think that she's part of the problem. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But 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 really, I, I just don't think that they're losing that much. So so my wife will show up to uh, locals this next couple of weeks. Maybe she'll play turbo. Maybe she'll start practicing uh, mono water because she really really likes mono water decks. Um, and she'll just move on. I don't think it'll affect her in this ginormous way. I, I I just think that a lot of people are overreacting. Yeah, I agree. I I I think. It helps like ninety eight percent of the people, <laughs> and the two percent of people who probably have fun playing that deck are upset. <laughs> right, and and realistically, like, um, you know, people like uh, 
like like anyone who's playing this style of deck, like there are other decks that can punish people in similar ways that you know decks with like a lua decks are very aggressive and very punishing there are other archetypes similar to you know a very aggressive stance there's just no more you don't get to have any fun decks <laughs> yeah yeah and it's not like it killed this card like you can still play a discard deck you just have to play a more fair game right like you can still make a discard deck if that's what you enjoy playing you're just not going to be able to lock your opponent out with one or two cards in their hand as which, easily. <laughs> which seems fine to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not being able to lock your opponent out of the game seems like a, uh, a fair trade-off, in my opinion. Yeah, it started getting crazy when you have, like, the Deep Ground Soldiers and all these other creatures or forwards that, that that trigger on entry or trigger when they're dead and you can, like, stack Gesper. Like, yeah. it started getting ridiculous yeah. how much advantage the deck was getting when you had stuff like that. I also doubt that the best version of Gesper was even found yet, you know. But, you know, I, I mean, I tend to think that about most decks. I doubt the best version of most decks has been found. Um, and, you know, the longer the game goes, the more will evolve those decks. But the point being that, like, it could have potentially gotten worse. And that is a slippery slope fallacy. I'm not going to say that way. I know that it'll got, it would have gotten worse. But I do think that there's a strong possibility that it continued to get worse from where it was. Um, and so I am glad that that's not an option anymore. Um but for worlds, how, how does this affect your worlds testing? Now, theoretically, it shouldn't affect it at all because turbo is still legal for worlds. But does it have any sort of implications at all, do you think? Um, I don't, I don't, it doesn't affect me, personally. Um, and I don't think it will affect anyone. Like, maybe people are like, maybe they'll give a second look at turbo if they weren't originally. They may be like, oh, they're, they're banning these cards, so maybe I should actually respect this deck some more and take a look at it. Or... They're banning these cards. Maybe I should actually test more against Turbo. People might actually run it. But I think, like, if you're preparing for Worlds, you're probably going to prepare for Turbo regardless of this announcement. So, like, I don't think it's going to change much for Worlds. Uh, now, that being said, I, I hope it doesn't... What's, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I hope it doesn't discredit, discredit anyone. Like, if someone decides to play Turbo, right? Let's say they win Worlds. I hope that they don't they don't get the discredit of oh well you ran Gesper and Thaumaturge, so that's why you run worlds you didn't really deserve to win worlds right like oh, that would not. suck from a player I from a player perspective right that would really suck. What sucks is that no matter what people will use it as vindication. So if if Turbo wins worlds, then they'll say well this is verification that it needed to be banned. And if it doesn't win worlds, people will say see we could have beaten it. Um, which of course, yeah. neither one of those situations is really, you know, there's just not enough, uh, not enough, uh, statistics for us to, to say that, you know, but Turbo was doing really well and I'm, I'm glad that it's banned. Um, there were some points, uh, you know, that Jamie Falker made, for example, that it, it hurts the legitimacy of the world's competitor, uh, because, of the re uh, because that it was banned but if you look at the reasons that it was banned despite the fact that it wasn't fun to play against um square enix does and hobby japan does believe that the deck was fair in a metagame sense so that shouldn't affect um the the world the legitimacy. Game, right right i can i can agree to that right so i i just like like i said i just hope that people don't discredit people like if someone wins with turbo that's like my biggest worry is like you someone like works so hard and if turbo ends up being the deck to run then and then it's the deck to run and if they run it they shouldn't get shamed for doing it is, is, you know what i'm saying no i i 100 percent agree um you know i i, I said that, you know i very much was considering turbo for nationals um i'm not upset that i didn't run it but i i again didn't fault anyone that did run it i think it was the best deck to run um that you know, there's there's no correlation between the fact that it won and me thinking that. I thought it was the best deck to run anyway. I just didn't want to run it. Um, yeah, I think we all had Turbo as, like, that deck that, that if we can't come up with a conclusion of what to run, we'll just default to Turbo. Like, I think absolutely. a lot of people had that. <laughs> but, is it, but even that itself is a very negative perspective, mm -hmm. right? Um, like, that that's unhealthy, in my opinion, that, that we're all going to have this... Like, like we should all have our fallback decks. Um, like, like if I can't decide what to run, I'm almost certainly going to run a water deck with Fasoya. Um, it's just what's going to happen. 
it, we should, and those fallbacks are healthy because of our play styles. But if a great variety of minds think that Turbo Ice, we all agree, is the fallback, I don't think that's necessarily good for for the game. I agree, and I also think what, what's unhealthy, which I don't, I don't think people said, like when you're testing for an event, and obviously you're probably going to test against Turbo, right? No one in your test group wants to play Turbo. That's like the only deck people don't want to play to test against you, right? And you have to, like, beg them, like, please play Turbo against me because I need practice. But most players, at least from my experience, none of them, no one really wanted to play Turbo. Well, that, to, like, be the, be the, the Turbo dummy. That was the irony of me for Nationals is that I, it, I wasn't considering it until everyone wanted, you know, Jamie asked me, uh, a few other people asked me, like, to just test Turbo against them. And I didn't want to, but I, I respected the fact that I would also become better at playing against Turbo by playing with it. And... After mm. playing with it is what actually changed my mind. Like, oh well, not only am I just beating everybody with this deck, but it's not it's not as not fun as I thought it was from my perspective while I'm playing the deck. I was actually having a good time, uh, you know, which it is what it is. <laughs> a, a, lot of, a lot of that's contributed probably because you're winning too, right? Like, if, oh sure, yeah, of if, course. If you're like winning against great, like, good, good players. With, regardless of what deck you're playing, winning against good players, it's going to feel good. Right. <laughs> when you're stopping good players, it feels even better. <laughs> right, no. Regardless of what you're running. So. That's a great point. And, like, you know, when I was seeing, basically, you know, I think I tested with Matiski a lot. I tested with Jamie Falker a lot. And, and when they were basically raging at the fact that I was beating them over and over again, it was fun. It was like, oh, man, this deck is the real deal. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, again, one of my one of my points with that deck is like, yeah, you could, it's not rock paper scissors though. Like you could build a deck that just crushes it, like I did with my national deck. I felt like my national deck crushed it, and in nationals I crushed it. I think I played it like three times and I crushed it three times. Um, I played it in the finals of the win a box thing or what? Not the win a box, whatever the standard event was the next day, and I got crushed o two. And I'm just like, okay, well, yeah, that's gonna happen. That's that's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's just a deck for you. Yeah. Like, it was sad. I was like, oh, I hope I have at least a 50% win ratio, regardless of the player skill. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the reunion event uh, a, a little bit. Um, I just want to recap on the reunion event because my mind is continually blown by this event. It, it really is, honestly. So, Matthew Rice and Chris Adams are commentating. Is that correct? That's my understanding. That's, that is absolutely absurd. Like, that alone is amazing. Now, from now, now, maybe that's not enough reason to come to the event, because you can watch that on uh, Twitch. Um, that's pretty absurd. That That is, I can't think of two people I'd rather commentate on the event. I think, I think that's awesome. I also think it's really awesome that, like, I'm pretty sure they're, like, paying their own to fly out or whatever to go do it, right? It's not like they're getting paid to do it. Like, that's how excited they are for an event like that, right? They're just paying out of their own pocket to come and do that. That's how exciting it is. Yeah, no, and, and that says a lot about um, the event, uh, how cool it is. It also says a lot about those two players um, and their respect for the game and their respect for the community, uh, which is really cool. Um, the the other cool thing is, you know, let's talk about the trophy. It's like a floating card base. The, it's one of those that trophy is freaking ones, right? sick. It's like insane. That trophy is so sick. Like, oh... <laughs> That trophy is, like, probably the biggest reason, like, a lot of people, at least in my era, were like, dang, I really want to go. That trophy is sick. It also plays music. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, so ab- It's so absurd how cool that is, right? And then you have you have the smallest details down to, like, the table numbers. The way the tables are numbered is really sweet, right? Um, and then, you know, the icing on the cake for me, my favorite format in Final Fantasy is cubing by far. Um, I have a, I have a cube of my own, um, that I maintain and update, um, all the way up to Opus 7. It is a ton of fun. And for cubing, what you guys don't, if for those that don't know what cubing is, it's basically, it is all-star draft. Um, it's just a term that's imported from magic. Um, so when I say cube, I mean all-star draft. So we are doing an all-star draft at the event for those so basically when you when you pay your $25 you get like four packs i i believe i believe it's four packs i actually think you get yeah, that's five, what i call i think you get five packs for some reason but 
I think you only draft with four, so maybe you get to keep one. Oh yeah, I saw. I saw it was like you draft with four or something, and then the top cut is the right. draft, right, or something like that. Right. So you're gonna draft. Um, you're gonna draft. Opus seven, and then the top eight from those draft pods that fire the top the, the winners from those events will fire an all star top eight draft that will be streamed, which is an all foil all star draft. So everything you draft is foil. And then you keep the cards you draft. I saw that. I was so sick. Oh my gosh! It's, a, it's <laughs> like it's like please let me be the person that opens like foil Shantoto foil cloud, and I'm just like uh. <laughs> right. And so e- the value and even in that then, draft is insane. even then, I might take the foil Astinian if I think that that's going to win me the cube. You know, like I depends on what the prize base is, or maybe I take you know the the the. The card that is going to complete my deck. Like maybe I've drafted Onion Knight, Rigdia, Grammis, and then there's the Al Cid right next to the Foil Shantoto and Foil Cloud. Depending on the price, uh, I'm, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the Al Cid. You can guarantee I'm going to take the Al Cid. Uh, you know, like that is so cool. And then you have Max Foils judging the event, which you know is just going to be a hilarious time. Oh god, that guy's a character. Yeah. Oh man. Like I. <laughs> And then there's the trivia. Uh, there's a lot of people donating stuff. I know Lawrence Olivia is sending in some stuff. Uh, Genesis from, uh, I think she uh, he's from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He's sending in some stuff. Um, I I gave away my Nationals playmat uh, to be given out. Uh, I gave um, some other stuff like Final Fantasy, Distant World soundtracks and stuff. There's a whole bunch of people contributing uh, to the to just showing up. So if you just show up, and you just want to have a good time. I don't even think you have to play an event. And I'm pretty sure you're going to have a great time. Yeah, especially because the community is awesome. Like, I've never been to an event where I've seen someone, like, do bad and not have fun still. Like, sure, you'll be sad for, like, the 30 minutes after the tournament's over. Yeah. But after that, you just hang out with the community having fun. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, one, the, the one moment of all of my time playing in the community that stands out to me most... I just had lost two time, as I predicted, um, in nationals. Um, and right behind me, Brian's standing there. And, and and I just pack up my stuff. You know, it is what it is. And Brian just goes, hey, you want to go get a drink? I'm like, oh, you lost two? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's go get a drink. Like, you know, like just <laughs> just like being able to have that camaraderie that, that we just got to go hang out. Like, even though we both lost, neither of us, we're both just fine. We're like, okay, we're going to go have a drink and have a good time, you know? And, and that was yeah, like a really cool memory for me. Like I, I that I won't easily forget. It, those are the types of memories that are going to happen at this reunion. And that like 40 man Korean barbecue thing. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So let me just That's explain, true. let me just explain my plan for the reunion. Now this isn't a square Enix <laughs> plan. This isn't, anyone else's plan so maybe maybe you know if, if you guys aren't if, if people don't want to come in don't don't come in my goal for the event is people to fly in on friday okay you can crash at my place you can crash at chad's place you can crash at zach's place we're gonna make this happen if you need to fly in and stay for free you need to stay cheap we're gonna make it happen friday night we're gonna play at our locals here at cool stuff it is an amazing time we all have a good time it's a ton of fun saturday morning our plan is to drive out to the event play in the event hopefully crush the event Saturday evening, obviously Korean barbecue. Um, they have some great they have some great Korean barbecue places in Orlando. And then I think what we're going to do is we are going to either rent a hotel uh, space or we're going to do an Airbnb um, and have enough room for a lot of people to crash. Is is the goal? So you know if you're looking if you just can't afford the hotel spot, we're going to make sure you guys are covered. Um, so we're going to have a ton of people that are crashing, having a good time. And then the goal is to wake up on Sunday and either go do so- go do something like Universal Studios or Disney World or, you know, one of the, like a dinner mystery or like um, an escape room or something together as a community, a non-Final Fantasy event on Sunday before everyone heads out Sunday night. I think that's going to be a ton of fun. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like I, uh, I need to relook at flights. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I agree. But, you know, <laughs> look, if you're driving two hours to work, maybe it's just not <laughs> worth it. Just fly out to Tampa instead. 
I think it's going to be such a good event. I'm so excited. I mean, that's not even to say like, like the price payout and all that stuff is really cool, but it's going to be able to hang out with people. Like I am so excited to see the, the Miami guys. I'm, I'm, gr- I'm happy to see the, the, the RVA boys. Uh, I hope some of the, the Las Vegas crew can make it out. Um, I mean, like this is just going to be absolutely amazing. Not to mention that I'm sure we're going to be playing a lot of bunny stasis. Um, Oh yeah, Irving's <laughs> game is awesome. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a ton of copies available. Like I'll have a copy with me. I think, um, yeah, Chris, uh, I'm sure Chris Adams and them and the RBA boys have a copy. So it's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, so before before we go, Matt, um, I do want to ask you just a few questions on Opus Seven. Uh, feel free to skip on any questions that are are, are revealing. Um, but I actually did a segment with Zach that uh. I ended up having allergies midway through, and uh, he couldn't, um, and then his webcam died. Something went through, so we didn't get to finish the recording, okay? So, Oki doesn't know I was going to ask him to do this, so feel free to pass, okay, on any of the cards. I'm going <laughs> to ask you a, a quick series of questions, and I just want you to say hype or swipe, okay? Hype or swipe? Hype or swipe. Hype being that you think this card is deserving of more hype than it's getting. Swipe. You know, like tender, being that you know you're gonna pass on this card. Okay, I like right. this. I can, I dig it. Okay, now if you don't remember the card, let me know. I'll tell you what they are. Okay. All, All right. right. First card: four CP wind uh, condor. Height. All right, cactor conductor. Flight. Chalinka. Height. Dorgan. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, hype. Uh, Galuf. Uh, swipe. Noctis. Hype. Uh, Moogle FFCC. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm gonna say swipe. Okay. Uh, Gilgamesh. Hype. Uh, Noel. Hype. Ramza. Hype. Agrius. Hype. Uh, Titus. Swipe. <laughs> uh, Yuri. Hype, like, times a thousand. <laughs> Yuna. I'm going to say hype because I like the card, but it's probably a swipe. I'm going to say hype. That's funny. I, I, I said swipe over recorded, and as I was exper- uh, exploring a deck today, I decided, you know, I think Yuna's actually really good in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, potential. Goldez. Goldez. That's the one, the, the three, ATP one? Yep. The thir- the thir- no, the, no, Goldez, not Goldez. Sorry. Goldez. Oh, Gold- the, Goldez. Goldez. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 3CP I- Dark Monster, for sure. Sin. Swipe. Oh, well, yeah, I was going to ask you about Giga Graviton, but I guess that's also a swipe if Sin is swipe. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. If it's a uh, Halicarnarsis? Halicarnarsis? I think, I think it's Halicarnarsis. I don't know. I don't say it, but I'm going to say ice. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like the card quite a bit. When I was talking to Zach, he was like, he was talking about how like he thinks the discard two summons break of forward is like what people are really hyped about. I'm like, I just like that you can play and like blank their Dataluma. Like cards. Oh right. yeah, I, I like being able to or blank your stroller as I day and kill it with yeah. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but like you can devout this into play. Like if you're playing like an ice water deck, like that seems really good. Like mid combat, you could also just play it with the star symbol into play during combat to do a lot of crazy shenanigans. Yeah, um, it's, the cards have a lot of potential. All right, this is probably my top five favorite cards. So you better not swipe this one. Sid Previa. Oh, hype, for sure. <laughs> All right, sweet. X-Death. Oh, hype. Uh, and this one you, you may not have thought about a lot, but how about uh, some Necromancer? Oh, hype. Sweet. I'm glad you think that way, dude. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to talk to Kyle McGinty. I have some ideas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Talinka. That's the uh, discard light and dark cards. probably a swipe for me but i'm sure there's people out there who disagree yeah it's a swipe for me too i'm not a fan of crystal users all right how about sarah 
Swipe. Swipe. Okay, I could see that. Yeah. I think I I do think it's insane in title though. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Eddie Clark you know, plays really good with it. Yeah, here's a controversial one. Uh, except for a title as well. How about Snow? Uh, ooh, that is a good one. Um, I'm gonna say hype. That's good because if you said swipe, I was gonna predict that you lose to it at Worlds. Some <laughs> s- s- some JFB loving guy brings some hyper aggressive ice lightning deck and just plays snow <laughs> and lightning and dulls through your guys when they attack. <laughs> um, oh, I'd be right. miserable. Here's an interesting one: uh, Time Mage. Uh, that's the standard unit Genesis one. Yep. Uh, I like hype. All right, I like it with the uh, gladiator. You know, yeah, that's it, the only reason I hype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gladiator. You know, right before Thaumaturge gets banned, is still pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah. How about how about the other the other Genesis Yuna Leska? Uh, swipe. All right, and I think we're almost done. Leviathan. Uh, hype. Hype. Uh, I'd say hype too, but I also say swipe and all the other ones. <laughs> oh, the summons. Yeah, like yeah. all the other summons. Yeah. Uh, how about Oracle? Same. Is Oracle good enough as a two drop in water? Hype, hype, hype. Yeah. Hype. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are we talking only for Soya or outside for Soya as well? Uh, like I think both, but yeah. definitely for Soya. But I like both. Sweet. All right. Um, and uh, the last two, um, Gremlin, the monster spook. Uh, hype for now until it like never can play again. <laughs> right, and fine. Finally, this card I like quite a bit, but Zach wasn't a fan of. I believe is the three drop red mage, or maybe he did like it too. Actually, oh hype! I like that I, card too. Yeah, I, I really I, good I, in water lightning. Right, bouncing a forward, uh, getting a forward, and then having an Odin later seems just fine to me. Right, yeah, and it's an easy brown target. It's good. Yeah, it's a great brawn target, and it's not even a terrible gladiator target. Since like, if you want to Odin later, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I that was a pretty short cut podcast, but I wanted to thank you for joining us. Um, shout out to you, and shout out to Meta Potion. Um, I always uh, appreciate and love you guys so much. Um, I'm really looking forward to. I'm just going to put you on blast right now, Oki, and just say like, I'm okay. Where's the content, man? Like, I I love the articles. <laughs> Let's get some articles up, dude. Uh, hey, I, okay, so I'll be honest. I definitely asked the team to get me some articles, um, but people they've been kind of lazy. So yeah, put them on blast. But um, <laughs> I'm, not I'm at fault as well, so I can't like. I can't get angry at them. If I'm not doing articles myself, then, you know, I guess I can't get upset at them. I've said the same thing about set reviews. I'm not, like, a huge fan right now. I'm just kind of over them. As far as video goes, I just don't have time. But I will just say I miss some written content, dude. Um, I, I have a lot of work meetings that I like to just space out on. So if you could if you could put us some content up, that would be so amazing. Um, you guys always have, like, <laughs> the best content. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, anything you want to shout out before we get off? Uh, shout out to TCG Titans. <laughs> they sure. are our sponsor. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, of course, my team, my wife, and see who else. Hey, you should ask, I'm your, a long list. You should ask your sponsor <laughs> to uh, help uh, send you <laughs> to a certain tournament to rep. So you get a sweet uh, that's, a good, that's a good a very good idea and then <laughs> and then your sponsor can rep that you were the winner of this big tournament the yeah. first the first reunion <laughs> tournament if that sponsor happens to be listening uh, they it, should definitely reach out make it happen sergio he I, I, sergio's probably like yeah i am gonna make it happen i'm gonna send andy that's what he's gonna say i mean to be fair andy told me he has all the trophies that for all support of it. Is that true um, he has the petite cup. Um, he is missing all of the LQ trophies. So no. Oh, get wrecked! Get wrecked, Andy. Yeah. He was bragging to me. He's like, I have all the yeah. Porter trophies. This okay. is trophies. Mine. Well, there, there's <laughs> only been two, right? The cards of Evil East tournament and the um and the petite cup. Though those are still impressive, though. You know, he he is someone that you need to be watching out for. 
Um, in particular, you know, I like to give him a lot of crap for running Lightning, but like I think Lightning actually just got better, so that I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> as soon as he says he's going to give it up, it gets better. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yep, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.